Welcome to Window to Hollywood. I'm Joseph Perlman, and this is Eugene Nomura. Hello. And we are here with special guest Takato Yonemoto, and we are very happy to have you here. Thank you. Yay. Thank you for being Yay. here. Yeah, I mean, first of all, also, thank you for... I remember, I remember you there. It was a, it was like the week before last, maybe, or something like that. I can't remember when it was. Thank you for coming to watch the work in, in the master class. It was my pleasure to be there as an audience, and it was really fascinating. Cool. Yeah, it's been, it's been really exciting. I think it's been really exciting doing it in this format uh, more than we ever have because being able to bring so many people in from all over the world and then to like all focus in together like this hive mind every week. Uh, it's really cool. And it's the first time I've been able to share the work on such a, you know, on such a big scale. So it's really, really cool that you got to see it. Uh, what was the, what were some of the things that stood out for you or what were some of the more, what did you enjoy? What was fun for you basically? What did you enjoy? For me, the biggest fun to watch was the like a, uh, the opposite universe they go with, you know. Yeah, the opposite choices. Oh, opposite so choices. Funny. It was amazing because like a, you you help actors like to build uh, the character and like ask question and they they uh, they are they were like making sure what kind of character they are uh, yeah. by you know. Uh, answering the question and then like once they build the character really up to the level yeah you encourage them to forget about it <laughs> yeah totally <laughs> oh man you get it you totally get yeah cool so that was fun yeah that was fun nice. and then like but like uh even when they like forget about uh their choices like they are they still have that in the layers and yeah. then like a uh, go opposite uh, makes the uh like you know whites and depths uh to the character it was really great cool. to see like a uh they are free uh with their choices uh, so i'm so happy that you saw i'm just so happy that you were able to see that and to get that just from watching once i think there's something there's something crazy, I think, to newer actors when we when I tell them to, okay, we've done all the work now. Now, like, forget everything. To, to, to really solve the problem in an exciting way, you have to put the puzzle pieces together and then forget it in order to find that thing that you never thought or, or like, rip the puzzle up and see the face that's on the underside. And that, to me, is so... And you can't do that until you've done all the work that's led up to that. You know, it's like, you can only do that when you've put it all together. And I, that's one of the most fun things for me is, um, is the forgetting of it. I think there's something, I don't know. I think there's something really beautiful about that. I think it, I think everybody can connect to that sort of thing. I think it's sort of whatever that thing is that connects us all, however we're connected, we've obviously forgotten about some of that in order to the, be the people that we are. So there's the forgetting, the forgetting of it is part of solving the problem on another level of consciousness. And um, yeah, really cool. It's, it's, it's endlessly fun for me to do that. <laughs> yeah. And you it's always dangerous. ask them like, are you having fun? Yeah. And that's the key to the acting, I think. Oh man. Yeah. I think that's the key to everything probably, but definitely the acting you know, whether they're having fun and they know it, you know, you know it like right away, whether it's, you know, whether it's fun and, uh, yeah. <laughs> and it's yeah. also amazing to see you liberated actors from being right or wrong. Mm. And then once they are free from like being right or wrong, like they can be themselves, uh, in front of camera, mm. you know, that's really sweet for actors to to have that choice well that's interesting i'm writing this down because i think it's so brilliant what you just said yeah. it's like liber you said um liberating yourselves from right or wrong right to kind yeah. right or wrong yeah and then we can be ourselves in front of camera so it's setting yourself free yeah 
Um, it's so funny. I'm writing this down, but like this is a recorded interview. But I'm like, oh, cool. This is so great. I'm like, oh shit, shit. This is recorded, so I can just watch this. That's the point of this. That that is actually <laughs> you are teaching to your actors. <laughs> yeah. Wow, I love that. And I, yeah, but I love I love hearing it from different points of view. I, I one of my favorite quotes is the quote from Max Planck, who's the, I guess the father of quantum mechanics, and he said when you when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And so I love hearing things. I love getting a perspective on it from somebody who gets it. From your perspective on it is really cool to me. The liberating yourselves from from being right or wrong. And I think people really do get. They are like stuck in that. They are stuck trying to think like. What's the right choice? But is that okay? You know, they, that's one of the biggest things that I think I do is I try to get people to break out of that. Forget trying to guess what somebody's looking for. Like, stop trying to figure it out in your head what's right or wrong. And, and just, you have to be, as, as a Keith Jarrett, the improvisational pianist, pianist said, you have to be willing to go out of your mind. You have to be willing to go crazy, to get, to go, you have to be insane in order to do this work. There's a level of, Chaos, danger, and insanity, which um, I have, that is endlessly fun. Yeah. Yeah, like it, it, you, like three years ago, I, at some point, like I decided to believe uh, where the chaos takes me and then let myself like go with the flow and mm. with the chaos. And then the chaos, like uh, I, I felt like chaos means nothing sure or uncertain. But mm. like uh, I, these days, like I get to realize chaos, even chaos has formula, how it's like, it, it, how the universe works. That's how I felt these days. Say that again. That's really cool, Takato. Chaos has what? Even chaos has. <laughs> I, I thought my internet internet didn't work, and you were just like a freeze. And <laughs> oh no, no, I'm like, yeah, no. Even chaos, something like oh, I was, I was hanging on every word. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> even chaos has some formula. 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 Yeah. How like uh, how universe works? Formula. Oh, yeah, totally. There's order in chaos, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I felt that way these days, especially these days. Mm. Because of what's happening with the pandemic, that kind of yeah. stuff? Yeah. Yeah. I'm still learning so many stuff through the quarantine. It's, uh, I still, like, I, I feel, like, up and down, like, roller coaster. Yeah. But, mm. um... I, I get more simple what's, mm. what's important and what I don't need yeah. anymore. Yeah, this is Your so values, cool. yeah, become clear in times like this. It's really strong medicine. I feel like this is really pushing all of us together to, it's, it's, things are coming to the surface that we realize we never really needed to do or didn't want to do or it like wasn't fun. Yeah, it's like, it's like um, communal medicine. It's definitely, I got this feeling when this whole thing happened, you guys were almost the feeling I have when we have an earthquake, this off balance feeling. Um, and it felt like we were all going through this thing together, this wormhole or this, um, we, are, we are so far away. I feel so far away from where we were and I'm very excited about it. I feel, I feel more simple. I feel more organized. I feel it's like a relief in some ways. Mm. Um, so yeah, I totally, I totally feel and I understand. I get what you're saying. It makes a lot of sense to me. And I think it's a good time to, sounds like you're saying it's a good time to just slow down and listen a little bit and uh, let go. Yeah. And, but, and then I, if I feel like running, I'll do it. Yeah. I never feel like running. <laughs> I never feel like running. But I always want to. <laughs> but I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I remember when I was a kid, I was a little kid and I was, uh, 
at school and I had to do sports and I said, listen, I don't like any sports that involve running. <laughs> so I had to like, <laughs> I did other things like I played tennis or I don't know. I, there was running, but it didn't, that's another example. It's like, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to feel like I'm running. I think that's what it is. <laughs> anyway. What kind of kid were you? What kind of kid? I was a crazy kid. I always tell this um, this story. I always love to, um, I want to talk about you, but I always like to surprise people. And one of the crazy, I think I told this maybe on another podcast, but I, I, I really ha I, I had the, I, I really had a need for, a yeah, need for love, a need for, um, you know, to be liked and that kind of stuff. But there was a certain exhibitionist quality about me. And I had a, a puppet theater in my basement, you know, with the puppets, the hand puppets, and then there's a curtain. And so you go in, Eugene's probably heard this story. You go into this <laughs> curtain and I'd have my friends over. Okay. I'm like, I was like, I don't know, five years old, six years old, four years old. My friends would come over for a puppet show and I'd go behind the curtain would close, but no puppets would come above. But a couple of minutes later, the curtain would rip open and I would be naked. <laughs> totally <laughs> naked. <laughs> Oh, my God. That's the kind of kid I was. Uh, I was. I, I liked. Yeah. I liked to surprise people. We're, we're all people. similar. I liked to, yeah. Anyway, I could talk that about this great. for three hours. What kind of kid were you? I was, um, you know, not social, and then mm. uh, even when I say like I go out with my friends to my mom, I came back to home in ten minutes and I'm playing with Legos. Yeah. yeah. And creating my 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 kind of world, oh, and playing with it, make this kind of similar to you, you know. Kind of inter like more internal, you mean? Internal, yeah. yes. Uh, do you have any brothers or sisters, or are you? I, I got the younger child? sister. Oh, you have a younger sister. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how, how what's the age difference? Uh, just one. Oh really? A year. Yes. A year, yes. Oh, cool. And you know, yeah, because um, mm, yeah, I was not social at all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was so social. <laughs> <laughs> I was never home. Oh, nice. Yeah, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> But since you know, um, uh, to be honest, like uh, uh, the the oldest memory of my life was uh, me standing in between my dad and mom at the entrance of my apartment. And then the mom on the floor, uh, red floor, and crying and uh, covering her face. And then uh, dad with the uh, rock, like a decorate the entrance and trying to hit her. And I was like, a, just like a standing in between and a please stop. That's hmm. the oldest memory of my life. So, wow. yeah. Wow. So I, I didn't have a place uh, that I can feel safe and be loved like when I was a child. So um, it was tough. And then the, the, I, I wasn't social, uh, even outside the house. So I didn't have any place to live. So uh, hmm. when I was... Uh, at the fourth grade, I decided to change myself to oh, wow. be a popular one uh, and, and to be loved by other kids, you know. And so, then I did it in one day, like this. Is that the day, oh. is that the day you, did, you did basically became an actor? Or did <laughs> it, or, or, I mean, that's amazing at first grade to decide that, like, It was a conscious decision that you made that this is going to happen and it's going to happen now? I, I did it, yeah, at once. When I was wow. fourth grade. Mm -hmm. Fourth grade, fourth grade. Yeah. What was the first step that you did? Like, was it a, is it a different, was it a shift in the way you were thinking? Was it a different behavior? Like, what did you, how did you implement it? Or, or what was it? Um... I think I needed uh, both to work, you know, like, because I, I, uh, when I, when I felt I need to change myself, I needed to feel I'm this person, 
not like acting as yeah. a person. I, I'm this person, and I'm I'm this, and then you like me, and I like you. That's that's the way I did, you know. And then be social, going out, never never went home, and playing with the other kids. Uh, no playing with Lego anymore. Mm -hmm. So you just became that person. You just became that 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 other version of yourself. You just you, you yes. totally became that person. That's amazing. Yeah, when I was ten. Yes, but I understand I never... that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Same, same thing happened to you. Me? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Very similar. <laughs> um, yeah. But when I went to junior high, like I got confused, which one, which, which, uh, which me is true me, mm. you know, and I got confused, but like, I just kept on going. Cause like, uh, I, I, this is a place like I can live with my friends and then they need me and I, I feel mm. loved, but is it the one, uh, the true, true me or the like a uh the created one they like mm -hmm. that's the confusion i get and what answer did you get because i'm thinking about you know i'm think maybe there's maybe there's so many versions of ourselves we can just pull in and pull in and you know what did you come up with or how did you what did you end up thinking were you just not did you just not know what was the true version did you always question it or did you get an answer to that question i i get an answer uh, both of them are me. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Both of them are yeah. you. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> yes. I talk about this in the work a lot. There's sort of like, I think we are capable of relating to an infinite version of ourselves, like infinite amount of things. And I think actors get stuck in trying to like, you know, you don't just get stuck in connecting to things that only happen to them. Um, and there's like, there's everything, you know, if you're, you're missing it, if you're not, if you're only looking at your direct experience, um, yeah, it's, I don't know. I, I'm very fascinated by quantum physics, quantum mechanics, the idea of sort of there's, there's version, there's, there's every possible combination and every possible version. All we need to do is take a rope and pull it right into us and, and be that. And then. This thought of maybe what what is the is there a best version of ourselves? I don't know if there's a best version, but maybe there's a happiest version or a most fun or empowered version. I, I don't know. I think about this stuff a lot. It's very interesting. I, I really, it's really brave to to talk about this stuff. And and I I also had a very similar experience. I had parents who were constantly fighting. My father uh, when he was uh, when I was younger. My sisters were too young to know had a problem with alcohol and, and pills and alcohol. And it was a very dangerous situation. And I always felt responsible. I always felt like I had to be there to witness it, to make sure that my parents didn't hurt each other. There wasn't, um, and it was exhausting. I remember feeling so exhausted by it that my dad, um, when he went into recovery for alcoholism, it was the most relieving day of my life. It was the most relaxed I had ever been. I'd never felt so relaxed and at peace um, than I did when he went to get treatment for it. And he's been in, you know, he hasn't had a drink in, I don't know what, 30, Good for 40, him. 40 years. Good yeah. For him. And his specialty as a doctor has been drug and alcohol addiction recovery. But I remember, it's very interesting. You asked, you know, what, what kind of kid I was, but there's a whole other layer to it. And your yeah. story, I, I wanted to you know, share that too, because it was, yeah, it was very, very unsettling. And it probably caused all that other crazy stuff that I did, you know, all the acting out type of stuff. But me too. <laughs> <laughs> Completely. We are all, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. I, I, I ask you, yeah, one, please, yeah, please. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Eugene. Yeah. No, it's okay. Come. On. Oh, I'm sorry. No, okay, no, so okay. Uh, so during the times like you, uh, your parents like fighting each other, uh, did you blame yourself or like uh, instead of blaming them? It's such a good question. Um, 
I don't know if I blamed myself as much as as much as I, I felt like I had to be there to make sure nothing bad happened. It was like I had to be mm. and it was like constantly being alert. And I just remember feeling so exhausted by it. And I think I was so focused on trying to make sure that like nothing, you know, nobody got hurt, you know, and that there was no because it was such anger and such sort of the, the, the yeah. vi violence in the air that it was like, if I wasn't there, then my whole world would fall apart. So I don't think I had the space to figure out. I, I, yeah, I definitely felt like, you know, uh, I was the sort of bad one. There you go. Yeah. So I, to answer your question, I don't think, I think it was just more about like trying to keep the peace and yeah, I didn't feel great. You know, well, it definitely didn't feel great. Mm -hmm. how, how about you? Did, did, did you guys feel that? Or was it, did you blame, did you sort of blame yourself for it? Or I was, I was always protecting my sister. Mm. I remember with everything and, you know, my parents got divorced and this and that. But yeah. I was always, I'm going to protect my sister from whatever it is. But other than that, I was just like going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was, yeah. I mean, you could ask anybody that knew me when I was from 10 to about 14. They'll probably say, man, you were nuts. Or you were an asshole. Or you had so much weird energy that was like going everywhere. I think that's, that's why we connect with dance, each other, probably. Break dance and, you know, all that stuff. <laughs> Some crazy, yeah. crazy times. Yeah. It's probably what brings us all together at the end of yeah. the day. And then I started acting, actually, you know, at the age of 14 when, when um, things happened and I had to go to a Japanese school from an American school. That's a whole different thing again. Because I also, I also had the, am I Japanese? Am I foreign? Because I was raised with English. You know, so it was more like, Wow, we're talking some deep stuff today. <laughs> it's great. No, I so, I so appreciate you know, this actually. It's, it's, really, it's, it's really great. Yeah, there are, you know, it's, it's, so I went to Japanese school. It's a whole different, completely different environment. Yeah. Um, you know, uniforms, which I didn't wear. I said, no, it's not done yet. And I didn't wear it. And <laughs> once I got these like uniforms, you know, like it looks like these, you know, soldier type uniforms. And then. I hated uniforms anyway, so I would act like I would go to school with that. I'll get changed in the bathroom of the st the train station, go with normal clothes, and then go to school with my regular clothes saying, sorry, my uniform's not done yet. They're still making it. And I went going, I went on for a while <laughs> with that, but it's like, no, your uniform's done by now. I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> you know, but yeah. Interesting Takato, experience. Did you, did you blame? Your, I mean, did did you did you sort of take it upon yourself? Did you did it feel like it was your fault? Is that did you do it? Internalize all that? At the time, I didn't realize, but yeah, um, yes, I somehow blamed myself. I think mm -hmm. yeah. maybe it's because of me. I'm not good enough, so I got some something like you know low self-esteem yes. uh, because of that. And then also, um, even I hated my father, but like uh, I needed love from him and the mm. peace and then the protected. Uh, mm -hmm. I needed to feel, uh, you know, being protected really, but yeah. I didn't, I couldn't get it. So like I stopped uh, asking for them. Because like mm. if you ask for them and you you couldn't get it like uh, it's really tough, so I mm. stopped like uh, asking for it, and and maybe because of uh, because of that, I I tend to keep good faces uh, to mm. everyone. I I can't be you know uh, you know free to express my anger or like I'm upset. I, I, maybe I couldn't say it yeah. for a long time because like, uh, um, 
I hated my dad, but I needed love. So I couldn't hate anything like infinite, you know. I I wanted to believe like he would change and he would give me love at, at last. Yeah. So maybe because of that kind of uh, way of thinking, like uh, I, I kept good faces to everyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did, did you, you ever, did, did that, that relationship, relationship ever, ever change? change? It changed. Uh, right. They, they got divorced uh, when I was 21 or 22. I, I'm not sure when mm -hmm. it was. Uh, and then, yeah, uh, they, when they, uh, told us like uh, they're gonna uh, get divorced uh, they're gonna divorce uh, my sister asked them not to please don't please don't you gotta keep on going yeah. as a family but I said um, if I'm gonna be the reason uh, to keep my mom at home against her will that's not what I want but uh i i'm gonna i'm i'm so sure i'm gonna miss the home uh which is gonna change you know in some way yeah that's how i told him and then like when i started acting um i i met so many good actors and then they were uh you know pursuing their acting career by asking who they are like all the time who who i am who i am yeah. what made me and so i did the same thing uh uh i i i went back to my mom and dad and asked them like how they how they met for the first <laughs> time mm -hmm. and how they grew each other and then like how they got bad and they couldn't go any farther you know um yeah. from beginning to the end i needed mm -hmm. to ask them and what they felt at the time and then like i i could uh i could absorb their feelings and then i could uh, i could become a child again i think mm. that's how i felt and by absorbing the feelings of becoming a child again were you able to change the meaning of the past for yourself were you able to to to, to, to get yeah, some relief? It, it changed the past as well ah, so, beautiful. so yeah. yeah so the present is the most powerful you know stuff we got you know yeah so i saw oh, man this is so exciting i'm getting goosebumps yeah the present moment is the most is our PowerPoint, the present moment is using the present moment, we can blast out things in the past, we can change the meaning of the past, in a way, through the present moment. Yes. How do you tell how do you think of the present moment? I think one of the things that's really neat about where we're all at right now with the pandemic is the present moment, it, time feels different. Now, I've always felt I, I, I kind of feel like we're in this endless present moment, but how, what, it, what does the present moment mean to you? Present moment, like uh, through this uh, crazy times, like uh, we, we faced COVID-19, mm. uh, you know, I think we, um, <clears throat> for the first time, we, we can get the, like a, something relate to each other for every kind of person no matter like uh which race you are or like mm. a rich poor uh sexuality anything like religion we went through like uh, all together so that's something uh we can uh you know relate each other that's yeah. the powerful thing we can use from now but yeah. so sad like uh, there is a riot ongoing in Minnesota. Yes. Mm, I I can't I can't ah I don't know what what to say. Yeah, that's a terrible incident. 
it's, it's a, a horrible, horrible incident. incident. It's horrible. It is so bad. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. I just I sort of wonder like. I think what's happening has the potential to push people to really help them to pull them into another way of thinking and connecting and being. And then you see things like that and it's like, Oh my gosh, like, you know, what is it going to take, uh, to get people to take better care of each other and better care of themselves and all that. Yeah. This to me and, and this convert, I mean, thank you guys for this conversation because I had an actor ask last, thank you, an actor, actor asked me last night, you know, what, what do you recommend? What books, do you recommend any books? And I'm thinking acting books. Yeah, there's some great acting books, but it's like, I think conversations like this, and I think books that are not related to acting, I think there, there are many other things that can help you to become a better actor than reading necessarily a book about acting. I, I get more from a, a philosophical lecture from Alan Watts or from, you, you know, and Einstein. And that's the kind of stuff that like really is the next level type of, so, and then, so this conversation is exactly the kind of thing that makes me understand the work that we do even better. It's just really, it's absolutely so great to have this kind of conversation. It's it's great because you you do go to these places you know when your conscience of when you when you know you have to go there, and if you know what you are, as you say, it's easier and you kind of you have to let go. Mm. You know, um, because if you keep and there are places that you probably have been holding and holding and holding, and then when you hit that, it just comes out. But you know, being an actor, you kind of let it, just let it go um, and try to accept everything as much as possible. Even uh, actually, hard, you know? yeah, you know, uh, actually before COVID-19, I thought it's going to be aliens or, you know, Godzilla, we can fight against like, eat, like it together. Totally. <laughs> what, what makes us team. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, like it was COVID-19. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love some aliens. I like, yeah. I, I, it's so funny. Yeah. Like what is that thing that's going to, it's, it's going to, it was the, it was the surprise, you know, it was such a surprise. Yeah. Alien, yeah, aliens. That'd be fun. I don't know if it'd be fun, but. Um, <laughs> but, we, but we have something we could attack. Like literally it's like all focus is on with the COVID. Yeah. It's like where, where. Yeah. You know? <laughs> right. <laughs> I still feel like it's so funny. Like my first, uh, when this happened and we went into quarantine, I went to, um, Costco. Do you have, Co is Costco in Japan? They, uh, they made one. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm thinking like, as I'm going to Costco, I'm like, Oh my God. Like, I, I, like it could have been aliens. I felt the same way. It's like, I have to like get everything in this one shopping trip. <laughs> and yeah. It's so funny. It's like, I think actors can, it's probably easier for them to relate and identify with a lot of these like um, third reality sci-fi stuff or, or um, you know, meteor about to hit the earth. It's just, it's, it's, they can probably relate to it better because of everything we've gone through. Yeah. A lot of things are going to change after this probably. You know? oh, right. Yeah. Right. Like, you know, yeah. like everybody's, yeah, it's what's exactly like values or what, you know, is it family? Is it your private you know, everybody is working from their safe zone. Like we're talking from our homes, you know, where we feel safe. It's different from meeting up in a meeting room and talking mm -hmm. or like being in a studio where, you know, it's kind of worky. <laughs> so it's mm -hmm. not your private space. Um, but it's, it's, I think everybody is getting used to this Zoom and all this as well. Yeah. So it's like, you know, when we meet next time or when we actually work on a project together, obviously this is, everybody's experienced this. Like in every country all over the globe, there's no, other than space, you know. So it's like other than space, it's space, everybody's floating or whatever it is. But, you know, it's like, <laughs> here it's like everybody's, we all went through it together. And, mm. you know, good things and bad things and, you know, whatever, but it's going to, probably change the whole like feeling and you know the unity and everything you know yeah. 
So that's why I, the rides are going to go even worse, I think, because it's like everybody's aye, aye. feeling the same thing. Okay. And everybody has that stress to kind of just go, Whoa! so that yeah. energy is going to kind of come out, I think. Yeah, when I, when I, when I'm going to give a hug to someone for the next time, it's going to make me cry, I think. <laughs> just giving hug makes me cry, I think. Do you, you miss that? that? Hmm? Do, you Do you miss that? that? Do you miss that connection? connection? Is it something yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, because I, I live in an apartment uh, with my roomie, but like we do... We didn't uh, like tell anything each other, but like we do quarantine each other in an apartment. Oh wow! Oh, yeah, so you somehow, okay? Like, I, oh. Yeah, yeah. I sense like she's she's cooking something, so mm. I'm gonna wait. Wow! And maybe I'm wow. when I'm cooking, like she's not gonna come out. Wow! Do you so inside the apartment too? Wow. Yeah, I felt so lonely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, do you guys do, I mean, is it because, do, do a lot of people do that? Do you just feel safer doing that? Is it that, is it hard to know? I mean, I think some people have different levels of, you know, being protected when they go out. Is it, is it just, just to exercise a high level of caution? Or that seems like that would be extra hard. Um... Do you guys live two, 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 sort of two separate lives? Is it just to, just to be extra careful? Is that why? I think so, without saying anything. I feel like in the, in the work that I do, I only hope people get it, but I'm just so happy because you came once and you got all that. And for me, that's like, no, that's, that's re oh, cool. This is a note I got <laughs> oh, from the class. Cool. Yeah, I, I think there's something really special about there's something really powerful about the present moment and then there's also something really powerful about the feelings and the emotions in the present moment and i think using the present moment and using the feelings and the emotions there is this there is this like this magic thing that happens and and i had a really interesting year last year last year i had a year where the notes that i took the personal notes were a thousand times what they had been any other year. I felt like I, I kind of can see it as a as a whole right now. Where for some reason I I was I was tapping into and I was connecting to these really spiritual things last year, having these incredible experiences of just putting a lot of love and emotion out there and then feeling it coming back to me without doing anything. And um, there was. And then it's almost like, wow, okay, it makes sense that there's an event like this that's happening. I don't just, it was a very spiritually significant year for me. And there was this really beautiful moment. I haven't shared too much where I just feel like in doing this work, I'm, I, I feel like I so connect to you um, with regards to that, just needing so much love. It's not about attention, it's just like love and, and sharing love and don't you can't, you know, I have so much love and. Um, share and I felt like I was really having fun putting so much of it out and I would have these moments where I would just be hit by these waves without doing anything I'd be in the middle I woke up and was walking around the kitchen and just hit by these waves that would like take me to the floor I felt like you know I was crying it was like this most beautiful sort of love that I could imagine and um and I don't have any answers and I, and I stop trying to figure it all out. But I just think that the, there's so much power in your words, the present moment, and then emotional, like the emotions coming together um, to either change the meaning of something in the past, to create something in the future, to change the present moment. And... I'm still learning and again, like I said, I don't have any answers, but that's what really excites me. You know, it get, like, sort of gets me out of bed and uh, it's why I do what I do because there's something so exciting. I feel like I'm just right on the edge of some really big discovery and it has to do with like creation. It's like making things with our bodies and with our words and with our emotions. And um, that's why as intense as the acting stuff is, I, it's just, it's 
I can keep doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it because it just it feels like I'm getting closer to some other big discovery about it, you know. Yeah. And Th thank you for sharing where you are right now. Oh man, it's 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 a pleasure. I, I'm just so happy to be able to have a conversation where we can kind of take a breath and kind of. I feel like we're we're really in, in in it's you like we're you have set the tone for this where we can just kind of drop down and kind of get to the what's really important here, which is it's why we do what we do, um, you know, why we do what we do and what excites us and yeah, I love that you know, Simon Sinek, that Silicon Valley author and presenter, it, he says, people don't buy what we do, they buy why we do it. And Maya Angelou says, people don't remember what we say, they remember, we remember how they make us feel. So we, it, it, it all comes back to emotions. It all comes back to like feeling stuff. And that's fun for me to like, you know, really dig the help the actors dig it out of themselves. You know. Can I, can I ask you one technical thing? Anything. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, before this, like, uh, you know, COVID-19, like, uh, mm -hmm. when I did the, uh, self tape, I asked, uh, one of my friends, uh, to be a reader behind the, uh, camera. But yes. right now, like I, uh, connect, uh, with my friend, with my laptop and recording on my phone. Great. So, the the way I deliver my voice or like a my power mm -hmm. like it got changed. Is there okay. any advice from you to uh, me like it being mm -hmm. like this? Oh, so interesting. So yeah, let's talk about this. So you're doing a taped audition, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and instead of because I, I do this with the actors all the time. So instead of there being a person right there actually you're saying the the energy level, do you feel like the energy level dropped or it became more? Yeah, it dropped. Uh, actually dropped. And Interesting. Because like, I couldn't feel uh, how far I am from the person to to say the line to, to say oh. the lines to. It's kind of tough for me to do it like a, like a you know, do it online yeah. perfectly. Yeah, I would say it's so interesting. I, so I've done this work for many years, either, you know, with actors in person. And I also do it just like this. And I don't feel like it. I don't feel like it changes much. I feel like there's a level of focus. I think the focus, there's a lot more focus that's required, not concentration, but focus in. And I feel like sometimes like the laser beam, if it's like here, it's kind of gets like here so I think that it's it's no less emotionally intense but it's more sort of focused and channeled I'm just trying I'm just trying to do an experiment here oh hey okay so if I'm talking to somebody here versus if I'm talking it kind of comes down a little bit maybe mm. I do it with actors all the time as well so it's like I'm talking to you you're my reader and then the camera is you know gonna be right right where my camera is recording this um, yeah, I, I wouldn't change anything. Do you feel like you're consciously changing it or is it unconscious? Uh, unconsciously, like it might volume, like it turns down. <coughs> turns down. Uh, yeah, because. Mm. Who, who's reading? <laughs> <laughs> it might, you don't like that person, maybe. <laughs> I need the self tapes like if, with him, like if <laughs> well. so it, it's, it's I mean, about who who they are. <laughs> Kato, my first response is like is I don't I, I wouldn't think that it's an issue, but what I would do is I would say when you know at some point if we get in the lab, I, I'd love to work with you in some in some way. We get in the lab and we start to coach on it and work on it and find that ultimately find that hook, and then you go into it. I think I think it's not gonna you're not gonna feel any different. So it just might be my guess. And I again I can't solve I don't think anybody can solve a problem in their head. I'd have to get in the ring with you and let's like let's figure this out on our feet. Um and my first guess is that I think you're gonna have to just break the glass of it at some point and just say, fuck it, and let's just break this glass. And and it just sort of like pop yourself back into the way that you usually do it. Um, 
But I, yeah, I, I think the other thing too is that working in this way is so exciting because it's the first time a lot of actors are actually working and in, in, in watching mm-hmm. themselves and watching the other actors in the exact way that the production companies are watching you and the casting directors are watching you. So it actually, I think it's really good. There's some actors that are very good in person, but they're not connecting on camera. So I guess my first thought is don't overthink it. Um, (laughs) I don't think you should overthink it. Don't make yourself crazy about it. And as long as you're emotionally lit up and you're emotionally full, I mean, you see how emotionally lit up I can get in class and I'm talking full, full volume, full emotion, um, just to kind of have a bit of a fuck it attitude towards it. And, um, but, but I would say maybe don't, it's, it, it, you may be feeling something, but nobody else is noticing. And I would just say the most important thing is still asking yourself, was it fun? And if you can't answer that, it was like, uh, then you should you lift the level of fun up a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But it would be fun to actually find it on its feet at some point. And, you know, if we work at some point, if we work on something together, then I, I cut my philosophy. My thought is this, that if we worked on something and we found that hook and then I was to say to you, okay, so were you conscious of the fact that you were pulling it back? You, I think you'd say, no, I, I wasn't. It felt totally, you know, I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's an, it's an issue. Um, that's that big of a deal, but I know that you feel something. You, you I feel. felt something, yeah. but <laughs> it, it, it's going to change. I think like after this conversation, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And one of the things too, is if I'm taking my headset off, if I take that off, whoa, I think it makes it much easier if I'm going to be acting with somebody and being a reader to maybe take the headset off. So the volume isn't so loud in, in your ear, but mm. you weren't wearing a headset. I'm assuming you were doing it. No, no. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Cool. It's something to play with next time we work together. Yeah. When we work together, I think I think you you could have fun with it. You could have fun with it. You could have fun with with the same reader that you might not like. <laughs> <laughs> I would be your reader. I love being a reader for actors. Yeah, I'll, uh, me too. I have so much fun with it. <laughs> anytime, anytime. Man, you know what? I've, I we talked about it last night a little bit. I think it would be so cool to do some kind, you see all these staged readings and stuff and everybody's sort of looking in their scripts and nobody's connecting to each other like always. We I think it'd something. be fun. We gotta do something. Let's do some, read some crazy shit, some crazy, I don't know, some play, some We should do that. Reading. We should actually, actually do, do a play with. I would love to. We could, you know, make choices and then just do it on Zoom. Yeah. And Working people like could this. feature, and people could feature whomever they want. They could watch it in gallery view. They could watch it in speaker view. Totally. And we we should just do it because I, I mean I think. The actors. Yeah, and then you know we'll we can do like a <laughs> a Zoom audition. <laughs> Get like the master classers, everybody in, and then you know, and then kind of work out. So it'd be fun. Yeah, I mean, I think at, at this point we yeah sure I mean. We, yeah, we and, so and you can, great... and you can act too. Oh, please, <laughs> so you, you don't have to coach. God we bless. just all go for it. I love, I love jumping into it as well. That'd, too. Be, fun. So That'd uh, be fun. I think so too. And I think we know so many great people. It's like, okay, can you play this part? Can you play this part? Can you play this part? Let's just like, you know, it's just, yeah, yeah it's just, yeah. No, we should do that. I think everybody's starting to get that urge to. I agree. Right. Yeah, and do it really well. Like, do it really well on a level that's like, holy crap! Let's yeah. Like... <laughs> really? I think we should do it. We should do it. Um, I think a lot of people would love to see it. You know. Takato, what? I, I agree. Takato, what is your like? What's the first thing that you do when you, like, what do you do when you get a script? Whether it's an audition, whether it's a a, a new role, like, what's the, what do you do? What's What's fun for you? Of I guess is it what's fun for you, and what's some of the first things that you do when you get something new? Uh, you mean the acting or, or anything? Yeah, like the as an actor, as an actor, if you get something new, like where do you start? Do you start with the work? Do you start with the memorization? Do you? Yeah. Well, there you okay, are. so I start with 
uh, checking the uh, vocabulary, uh, which I don't know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, like, it's tough to understand what's going on without knowing the vocabulary, especially yeah. for me uh, as a Japanese actor. And then once I uh, get to understand what the lines are and what the situation is, I then I uh, translate it mm. uh, in, it into Japanese as well. And then the, how I uh, I'm get, I I want to check like how I feel if I read it in Japanese, and yeah. then I get the sense some sense of uh, when I like a senses from like a speaking Japanese uh, like the same lines in Japanese, and then like it's, uh, you know bring them into English reading, and then uh, I read more and more, and yeah. then. Uh, I try to find out like uh, what kind of situation it is, and then uh, find my uh, you know sense memory, mm -hmm. and similar to the situation, Great. and then I absorb uh, where I am in that situation, uh, and then I find who I'm talking to, not literary on the uh, line, like a uh, script, like I find someone uh, giving me, uh, gave me the same kind of feelings like uh, yeah. <clears throat> before. And then I, I picture that person like a three dimensionally mm -hmm. uh, from head to uh, everything. And then mm -hmm. like I, I say something to that person which I've never said before. Oh, cool. uh, and then what else I do? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I that's do, a, I do so many things. That's a mm. lot. That's and, and is it fun? I mean, do you enjoy is, it? It's it fun. is fun. And also like I, um, I, I take a walk uh, in my neighborhood and then I say the lines and I also the, say the lines are uh, not written in the script. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes I yelled at the airplane, like it flying just over me. Yeah. I say something like this. Yeah. <laughs> and I get, I give my, uh, freedom uh, uh, to myself to express whatever I feel. And then the, uh, once I get to some level, uh, the person <clears throat> I'm, I'm having the conversation in the scene, like it started, uh, starts uh, talking to me yeah yeah uh which which is not written in the script yeah okay like, then i start conversation with that character great and then the, we we make the scene uh together that's what i do when i have some time yeah it's beautiful to yeah i mean this is like so I'm, I'm imagining you get to the point where you don't feel like you're feeling so into it that you don't feel like you have to do anything. Like you're feeling so connected to it, right? Yeah. I describe it like you, we do whatever work we do, we do it so we can live off the interest of it. We don't have to, when we're acting, we don't have to be doing anything because we've already done it. It's so hard before it's so easy. Um, and it sounds like what you're talking about is, and this is neat because... I love embracing a, a level of chaos, and I love that. I love that hearing you talking about sort of yelling something to an airplane. I think it's, I think <laughs> it's important to do that and to to yeah. uh, to blast some stuff out of us, to shake it up. Um, Joaquin Phoenix talks about it is like shaking it up to take pressure off of it, to 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 to, to loosen it up a little bit. Yeah, really cool. Mm. And also sometimes I dance. <laughs> as Great. I as I want to like I free I dance freely, yeah. Do anything crazy, and then like uh, I realize like uh, what I wanted to express when you do that life. dance. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, the, it is really it is really cool. It reminds me of um, because this is so like it's visceral. It's in your body. It's emotional. You're moving with it, and I'm always telling actors to. Um, or anybody really, but actors to stop trying to figure out how to play him or her in your head. 
like get oh get off of an idea of it and start to put it in your body and start to move around with it and um because it has to become an experience and not an idea and it has to go through imagination as stella adler said she said facts are death to an actor until they're fed through imagination and become experience and this is everything i mean this is what you say this is what you're telling us that you're doing it's really cool yeah but you you start yeah you started acting what from 47 ronin right yes yes uh just before 47 ronin i was just a guy behind the camera but like wow. i started acting from 47 ronin I, wow. I was just eating ramen noodle at Japanese market, <laughs> and I just felt it. <laughs> wow! Yeah, you were in LA or Japan? Uh, in LA, uh, oh, I was really? eating ramen noodle at Japanese market called Mitsuwa. Uh, <laughs> I am there every single day, and I eat ramen at the Japanese Mitsuwa market. I live in Mar Vista. And is it, it is it the ramen place? Is it the ho, ho, uh, which one is Hokka? Uh, Santoka. 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 Yes. You, oh, I wow. love that place. So they scouted you at Mitsuo. That yes. is so uh, funny. Yeah, I was just wow. eating ramen noodle. So <laughs> ramen is my lucky charm, you know. Oh, <laughs> I love ramen. <laughs> which which ramen did you get there? Which one? What's your favorite? The salt ramen? The miso ramen? The <laughs> I love that place. I'm going to get hungry now, guys. I think it was miso. It was the miso. Oh, I love it. I get the miso or the salt ramen with the little ikura bowl, the ikura salmon bowl. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's right down the street from me. I'm getting hungry. This is... It's so funny because when I first came to LA, it's like before anything was happening, that's what, that was my comfort place. I would be at Mitsua every single day getting spicy tuna roll and eating ramen. Yeah, it's, I love that place. Why, why <laughs> did you get so fascinated by Japanese foods? Uh, I don't know. I was a young kid. I was 10 or 13. I grew up in Boston and uh, I was in Newbury Street in Boston and I got some sushi at some Japanese place, uh, uh, just a... A kapamaki for the first time. No, what, what's the cucumber? Tech kapamaki? kapamaki? Kapamaki for the first time, and it blew my fucking mind. I, had, <laughs> I was like, what? This is amazing. And I, I mean, I'm Jewish, so I like these sort of fish, salty, you know, I yeah, grew up yeah. with lox and bagels and smoked fish, and it was like, whoa. And I, it was like, I used all the money I had on basically like, I would just get, I would just get sushi or take out sushi or pick it. I, I, I don't know what it is. It's my favorite, not just sushi, but Japanese food is really, is probably my favorite thing to eat. I don't know what it is. It's just my, maybe just that Jewish thing growing up, but I, I love it. Like deli food and Japanese food is, uh, is my You are so great to try it for the first time. Like it's, yeah. it looks so weird to, for you back then mm -hmm. i think because like know. it rolled up with seaweed and the cucumber inside it i was japanese in another life I, it was never weird i eat <laughs> i eat i eat in the morning i have natto i eat like natto yeah. i mix it with um someone a friend of mine um uh, taught me how to mix the natto with the uh chazuke chazuke and the rice and a little egg and some anyway I love it, and I, I have to get my ass to Japan at some point because I yes. definitely feel like I we was have there to, in another life. We'll take you to the best places. We'll take <laughs> you to the wait. best places. Oh man! Don't I forget me, Eugene, please. Oh. Yes, we'll all go. We'll all go. Yeah, we'll, we'll all go to Japan and do a Zoom play. <laughs> and do what? A oh. Zoom play. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. There's no need for us to actually go anywhere, but we will. <laughs> you know. Oh, I'm just passionate about food in general, but yeah, that's, that's so funny. But the Mitsuwa market, it, there's so many intersectional things um, that, that, yeah, I feel like my beginnings were, Mitsuwa market were part of my beginnings in Los Angeles. It's really funny. <laughs> and that's where you were discovered. That's amazing. That's so cool. Wow. So someone scouted you there. Wow. And then yeah. they, and then you just got called in and then you got the part. Yeah, and then uh, in, in a week, like I took an audition at uh, Universal, uh, no, it was maybe some other studio, but uh, anyway, like I took an audition <laughs> and I played uh, a character called Basho, and I, 
I, I had never acted before that audition in my life. But like wow. uh, what, what I did uh, as Basho uh, cracked the like, uh, uh, you know, casting producers out, you know, huh? and they laughed out. And it felt really good. Like uh, I got new <laughs> spots and uh, nice. but at, at the time, like I didn't try to get the role. I just like I wanted to know like how the how Hollywood audition uh, goes, you know, mm. for everyone. And I wanted to know because I, I wanted to be a producer back then. Then uh, I just enjoyed acting. Wow. Then I went home. That's it. That was the first acting in my life. Wow. So you went to Hungary and you were there shooting for several months. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, so in a, in, in a week uh, again, uh, and next week, like I got called, uh, called back and I did the same thing basically. And then in 10 days, uh, they called me again and asked me to fly to Budapest to be part of the movie. Wow. Wow. Yes. But at the wow. time, like they, they, uh, they weren't sure like if I really get the role because the director and the producers were already in London. And then they didn't get any chance to see me in person. So I had to fly out to Budapest and then uh, wait for director to meet me mm. and decide like if he goes with me or not. Mm. And wow, then, so mm. wow. So they're making their decision in Budapest. So you went all the way to Budapest and you might have not, you might have had to fly back. Yeah. If you didn't get the part. Mm-hmm. Wow. But, uh, you know, uh, so again, back then, like I was an assistant to a director. So I thought like a, um, my, my job as an assistant, like a, I need to make my job as something uh, easy to be taken over by anyone, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like a, even if I leave the place. Yeah. But acting job is nothing like that. Like when they, when we book something, it's like the biggest, mm -hmm. I love you. Like from the casting and the producers and the production and director, I love you as being, uh, being yourself. That's the biggest thing in my life, you know, because mm -hmm. as I mentioned before, like I, I had, you know, low self-esteem and then getting, I love you being myself just by being myself mm -hmm. was a, you know, really epic moment in my life. Wow. It all connects. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Did you That's feel a that? very, very nice way to look at it though. Uh, we love you. For you. And do you get the sense when that happens is that they like, that's so cool because that's interesting. Um, cause a lot of actors feel like I always talk about bringing yourself to the role. So you must really feel like, I, I think that's why people get these jobs because of who they are, not because of some thing that they create. And I don't think a lot of actors are aware of that. Um, how much of yourself do you feel like you bring to your work, to your, to your acting, to your auditions? I, I, how much of you is it, is it, are you bringing all of yourself? And by bringing yourself, I don't mean playing yourself, but it coming all from you. I think it's all coming from me. Uh, yeah. It's just the, uh, you know, the preparation means the distance for me because, um, maybe like something uh wh when you read the uh script and then you feel it's not me like i won't do this or this or that yeah. or this that's not uh how i feel like it's just like a, what it, what what it takes me to do it before this thing uh, really? just yeah. the distance i think yeah that's that's all about the distance then the distance means mm. the preparation i need to to be that character but it's all come from me yeah 
I just don't know how, how one can do it otherwise. There's nothing more interesting than your humanity, your, your soul, your personality. I always like to ask this question to the actors, under what conditions would it be possible for you to feel that, for you to do that? Mm -hmm. It's fine if you've never experienced it. Great. But under what conditions? And there's... I did a, I did a fun... Um, a fun, a fun presentation yesterday, and it was a quote that I wanted to bring up. It was on dangerous acting. Like, what is dangerous acting? And I'm gonna see if I can find that. Uh, find that quote. I have it right here. And let's see. Yeah. All right. Let's see. There's a mon oh yeah. So it was the. So Jordan Peterson quote, he said, there's a monstrous element to the human psyche that you need to respect. That is a part of you. You should regard yourself in some sense as a loaded weapon. And when it, I love that. You should regard yourself in some sense as a loaded weapon. And this Jordan Peterson was telling a story. He's a clinical, I think he's a clinical uh, psychologist. I can't remember his exact title, behavioral specialist. And he was studying and he went to a mental hospital to visit his, his mentor who was working at this mental, it's like a prison, it's like a prison institute. And he got to this institute and his colleague, his superior said, here, I'm going to have this guy show you around, uh, meet me in my office in about an hour. And so the gentleman showed him around, the gentleman was really nice and showed him around and he met all these other psychiatric inmates and he eventually found his way to the office of his mentor and his mentor said, so what did you think of this guy that showed you around? He said, oh, he was wonderful. And then he told Jordan that, yeah, this guy brutally murdered a police officer and bashed his leg and he did the most horrible things. And it got Jordan thinking about like, wow, under what conditions would it be possible for me to do that? Mm. And he said it took him a while. It took him a couple of weeks to figure out to find a way to relate and identify with someone. He said, not only did I find out that, that I could do that, there is a way that I could do that, it's a lot easier than I ever thought it would be. And what's amazing is to have that, that's what acting is, and not to judge yourself as a monster. I think there's a, mm. there's a, there's a, there's a healthiness about that. There's a cathartic, and Jordan Peterson talks about it being a healing, a healthy thing, but... I've always loved that. Under what conditions would it be possible for me to do that? And stop judging. Stop judging whether you think this, you know, we are all capable of doing anything, an infinite amount of things. Um, so, uh, so yeah, and I think, I think it always has to come from, I mean, I just think it's, yeah. it's best when it comes from who you are all the time. There was, yeah, I remember there was one, one role I played way back. Um, it was a really, he was a mean guy that I was playing and I had to like, kind of like pull my girlfriend with her hair and stuff, a very violent man. And I went to my grandma's place and she started scolding me. She's like, you should never do that. You huh. have to give, and she brought, she brought all these like treats and she was like, you have to give this to that actress and apologize for hurting her so much. And I was like, but no, it's, I'm not, I'm not hurting her, but it, it's a role and, you know, we're, we're very safe and mm -hmm. she's fine and whatever. But it was like, you know, the, <laughs> my grandma was really pissed at me for doing that. So. Wow. <laughs> it was that real to your grandma. It was, it was, it was pretty bad. It was, yeah. Mean characters, but as an actor, it was fun though. In a safe place. Yeah. Safe, safe. 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 It's important. Yeah. And also, like you, uh, Joseph, you reminded me of the way I prepare for the character. Uh, one more thing, like I write the biography. Right. Like mm -hmm. a, uh, what kind of parents I was born to. Yeah. And also what kind of town like I grew up with. And then maybe there is a corner I... I nice. I always like to go and then like yeah. I find a dog or something like that. Like it, mm -hmm. I build the town and the house and the parents. That's that's the thing. Like I do too. You know, like yeah. writing biography. Yeah. 
I just think there's, I mean, it, it, it's sort of anything that you do is great as long as it's fun. And then as long as it gets you to the point where you can live off the interest of it, where you don't have to do anything. I, I was always very inspired by something. One of my favorite actors, Philip Seymour Hoffman, um, said he was asked in a interview, which characters, which characters could you most relate and identify with? And he said, I could, I could relate to every single character I played. And he said it got to the point where after I did all the work that I did, when I got to set and I started acting, I didn't do anything. I didn't alter or change myself at all. I didn't do anything other than than playing myself because those people were in me in such a way that I didn't have to do anything about it. And I really like that. I really think, I think a lot of actors expect, I mean, it may be younger actors or newer actors or actors that had weird training, they expect every moment to feel like they're birthing a calf, that they're like, it's like effort and that they're doing so much work. And that effortlessness is terrifying to them. Like the feeling that they're not doing anything. And I think that's just, just as important as fun is it's feeling like effortless. And I think you have to earn that by doing all this great work that you do. And to get to the point where you can sort of, it's in you, I, I think of it like, strong medicine you take a medicine to protect yourself from malaria you go to india or something and when you get off the plane you don't have to do anything because the medicine is in you you know or like yeah so that that's really fun where you do the work to such a degree that you you earns you the right to do nothing when you get on set other than figure out what you're lit up with at the beginning of the scene to mm. to light up emotionally and then let it go and trust that it's interesting enough. And I, I think a lot of actors don't trust that they are interesting enough as themselves. So they wanna, they wanna find these techniques or they wanna, they wanna disappear, you know? There's this needing to disappear in a role and to hide. Yeah. And I, and I like to, as, as you said, I like to liberate people from, from, from that. Like, no, the present moment is the most dangerous and fun and exciting place. So let's live in the present moment. Let's not live in another place that's not right here and now. And you can tell when people do that. You can tell when they do it in conversation. It's like they drop out, they're gone, and then the audience is gone too. Yeah. Right, right. Because, uh, you know, <clears throat> when you are stuck being something, you're not free. Mm -hmm. And great yeah I, I forgot what I wanted to say <laughs> but I love when you said I'm writing it down when you're stuck yeah. being something then you're not free oh yeah. yeah I now I remember I wanted what I wanted to say like it, I, I don't deny uh, <laughs> whatever I feel right now because once I deny like a feeling this or that or it's 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 the denial uh to the present moment and then i can i cannot get to live uh the present moment that's the painful thing mm. so i don't want to deny uh how i feel right now yeah yeah it's so interesting i'm just thinking about the stories we were telling in the beginning of growing up and and um, I don't think there was any escaping the present moment. I'm just thinking about kids in general. Is it, is it easier for kids to escape the present moment or do kids not realize there's anything else? You know what I'm saying? Like, <clears throat> I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about something I don't have the answer to, but, um, I think kids are moment. always, always living the present. Yeah. No matter what it is, it's just only like with, even with like Lego or mm -hmm. like watching my son, he's 10 now. But whatever he does, he's like fully into it. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if it makes sense or not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but whatever they're into, it's and then when they get conscious, it's like, okay, is he gonna get is dad gonna get angry with this or is mom gonna tell me to do this or yeah. do I have to do? But other than that, it's always they're fully lit. And like he'll explain to me something that makes no sense to me sometimes. But he's having the time of his life. He's like, this, 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 this is, that. what do you think? 
I have no idea what you just told me, <laughs> you know, but it's, it's, I think kids, watching kids is always, I mean, like, you get the, first of all, they give me a lot of, like, most of my energy, <laughs> and at the same time, like, you know, with, with even animals as well, like dogs or whatever it is, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm... <clears throat> I'm also thinking about like the memories because like mm. I, I think when we're when we're having these incredible emotional experiences in the present moment, these are the only things that feel real to me. And it's interesting is that even the the intense moments of being a kid and you know these these in, these very painful moments and moments that were totally exhausting, I will. It's like they're they're right there. It's anything else. Everything else mm. didn't matter, and the only thing that matters is when we are feeling things in the present moment. So just going back to those those times, it's like something about being in the present moment and feeling what we're feeling. Um, that to me feels. I remember them. I'm just sort of thinking in terms of like what's real and what's not real. Like maybe that's the most real stuff that we can, you know, mm. in our lives, and then. And then I always like to think about the sort of quantum theory of like, it's this, it's this, there's always, it's, it's nothing but the present moment. <laughs> you know, there is yeah. no past. There is no, yeah. And, and what, what really is the present moment? And, and is everything the present moment? And yeah. That's the stuff that I think about before I go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I totally agree with you. And, mm -hmm. but also like, we cannot forget that like when the reality is really painful they need to create some other mm. some outer world to yeah. like they can ex escape to that's yeah. my lego and maybe that was your like a uh you know the play maybe yeah yeah so that that's also the you know pleasant moment like it it's always yeah. there like a, the pain is always there yeah. when, whenever even whenever they uh go out to the Lego world or like mm -hmm. the playing with dolls or, but yeah, they, they need to create the, uh, something else. And you did that too. And you recreated yourself. And it's amazing that we have the power to do that, but maybe we forget that we don't have to just suffer. We just instantly make something else and flip that switch mm. uh, to be able to do that. That is exciting to like, to, to create something, to just instantly create something. The process of creation like that is really That's exciting. That's how I survive the moment. Is how you survive the moment is you created a new moment. Uh, the, the, the change myself or like it being yeah. something else or like yeah. a, uh, play with Lego was the way I survived the moment. I love that. Yeah. I'm just thinking of that as a title, like surviving the moment. I just love the way yeah. that sounds. You know, like yeah. surviving the moment. It's so interesting. Not escaping the moment, surviving the moment. And yeah, there was a really fun story about John Malkovich, who I really like that actor. And he said, John Malkovich, somebody asked sort of like, you know, where does your inspiration for everything that you do? And he, he plays roles that get very angry a lot of the time. And he said, when I was younger, I had an older brother that would torture me. He would sit on my head and fart on me and hold me down <laughs> and put me on a pillow. And I feel like everything I'm doing in my career is bouncing off of that, is like pushing off of it, is that screaming that fuck you to my brother. And, um, and I love that. And I think, I think it's neat because there's there's all these experiences that you are and we are bouncing off of in our life and and acting out to I always felt instead of I, I I never want I I never accepted suffering under the present moment I always pushed back I screamed louder I blasted it harder I and I talked to the actors about feelings of fear and anxiety and I think the answer to figuring out how you deal with that is to outfun it is to burn through the fog of that with hotter emotions. And I think as kids, we, we maybe did it intuitively. Uh, I think it's healthy to do that. Um, and this is what, I mean, this is what we're talking about is where yeah. what's you're talking about Takato is, is the, um, is not accepting, not accepting that, not suffering it. And it's interesting is that you said you internalized a lot, but you also, I mean, you also learned very at an early age 
how to change it, how to, I'm done, I'm done yeah. with that. So now I'm becoming more like a child, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, that I couldn't do it at the time. But like, if you live longer, you can, you can get a chance to do it mm. afterwards. You mean like if, if one lives long enough that you can kind of come back to that? Yeah, you can do it, I think. Yeah. You can, you can become child again oh, if you yeah. want to. Yeah. Yeah. I think the more, the more, the older you get, you get, I mean, the child keeps coming. <laughs> I mean, like, um, cause it's like, you don't, when you're young and you want to look a certain way or you want to have people, you know, or, you know, this, this pose of energy or being a man or this and that. And then once you have a child and whatever, and then you age, it's like, you don't give a shit about all that crap. It's it, like literally, it's like well, forget all that stuff. Yeah. As as long as my son and my family is happy and and like mm. when we're working together on something, and as long as this is pure and good, it, I don't care about anything else anymore. Yeah. And but that's because of not just age, but I mean, you know, but I guess experience and whatever. But you get to a certain point where it's like you don't give a shit about all, what all that all that. Mm -hmm stuff which might have meant the world to you for two months <laughs> when you were 22 or something you know <laughs> i was listening to a really good talk by um rupert spira uh british um lecture he talks about non non-dualism which is a whole other thing but he said that you think of awareness think of your awareness just being aware of something and he was sort of what is the nature of our awareness? What is the nature of our conf uh, of our consciousness? And you just you have to kind of drop back and you have to think of, okay, is there is there an end to our awareness? It was the first time I was able to grasp like what infinity might mean. There's no end. Oh, can it be um, can it be stained by experience? Nope. Um, is it uh, limitless or are there limits to it? I'm like, whoa. And then I'm thinking about awareness, just the pure awareness. And like my awareness, it's not limited to this room. It's this infinite, just plane of awareness. And then I'm thinking, wow, that is the same as when I was a kid. It's the same as now. It's the same for people that are a hundred years old. It's like awareness is, it, it is, um, it is just as vibrant. It is just as strong. There is, it is filled with love. It is, um, and that's another, I mean, just thinking about, you know, who we are as, as children, it's this thing that like, no matter what age you are and who you are, it's like everybody. And I, I kind of think that's the thing that connects everybody. I think, I don't think my awareness, there are two different schools of thought. One is that we are all these brains and we all have these individual awarenesses. And I, I don't feel that. I think we are all this, like, we are all this one awareness having this human, having this human experience right now. And I think there's no doubt about that for me doing this work, um, having this, this shared awareness. And, and yeah, if I just thought that very interesting is that it's the same awareness I had when I was a baby, but we, yeah, we're just, we, we lose consciousness of it in a way. Deep, some deep shit we're talking about. Here. Yeah. <laughs> Window to human. Jeez Louise. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, <man. laughs> really? It's... Yeah. Yeah. I'll be thinking about this the whole day. <laughs> I feel, yeah. And I'm, I, I may make a phone call to my dad or mom, you know. <laughs> ah, well, that'd be nice. Yeah. Yeah. Also, like, <laughs> um, as I told you, like, uh, the the moment, uh, the oldest moment in my life was like a, in be standing in between mom and dad. Mm -hmm. And then the, that is the like a biggest anger I have, uh, you know, when I when I dig uh, into mm -hmm. back back in the memory, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so I, I used it, the use the sense of it, like it uh, for so many like uh, characters I I play mm. even in the preparation too, but like uh, I I got to know the biggest fear 
or biggest trauma I had was when my mom left home for a day or two. So I felt that is the scariest moment of my、mm-hmm. life. Because, so like, if you, you're going to leave me、uh, in a house like this? That's,、mm. that's the fear I have.、Wow. And then I. <laughs> Mm, okay, you know, like when I, when I date someone, like、mm. a, uh, on the first date, or like on the first day, like we decided to、uh, get along with, you know, I, I tell her, I told her, you know, like even in a quarrel or like even in a fighting, like if you say, like, we're going to break up, and then I will let it go. I won't say、uh, nothing against about it. Maybe that's. Because, like,、uh, of the fear, like,、uh, uh, when my mom left me for a couple of days,、mm. and then that was really stressful, and then I couldn't、mm. take it out again, you know,、yeah. e- even one more time. Like, once she says no, I, I don't want to ask for it because,、yeah. like, it, it's going to hurt more. Yeah. That's the moment like I had in my life. Like, I don't know why it, it came to me right now, but like, I wanted to share. Yeah, thank you. Because it's almost better to not have to go there again. It's better to,、hmm. I mean, it's maybe, maybe, I mean, some people, it's like it's better to blow up a relationship. It's better to not do something than to feel what it would feel like to, to get to go there ever again.、Um, better to do that. And I behaved like it's, it's her fault. Like it's my gar- ex girlfriend's fault like,、uh, to, to say something like, <laughs> about it. But like, it was because of me, based on my trauma. It's not their fault. Like, that's my homework. I have to do. But I put it on against my ex girlfriend、mm. before.、Yeah. But now I got to know why, why I do it. And then I, I get liberated. And like I got free from it. So, like, knowing myself is like a,、uh, making my life easier, you know? Yeah. No, I, I, this is beautiful. Like, but also, it feels like,、um, Takato, that you're actively, consciously trying to understand and to know yourself. <clears throat> To find liberation from those things which were really, I mean, which really, you know, bound you up in a way, is to sort of break out of that. I mean, I, I've heard that so much today with this, in talking with you, with the dancing, with this, the airplane, with the, you know, with all this stuff, is always, always trying to find that liberation and break out of that, right or wrong.、Um, and that, that, I mean, man.、Um, And do you feel like you have total liberation right now, or do you feel like there's certain things that you're, you're still working through, or do you feel really clear and liberated just in your life right now?、Uh, I find something else like a day by day. You know? yeah, Once I, I feel like I get liberated, but there is something else. Yeah. Yeah. So it's never ending. Yeah. Yeah. It's really never ending. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it keeps coming. You, and then, like, you know, <clears throat> when, when you get, it, if you get a family or whatever,、mm-hmm. then it comes again in a different way. It's like, oh, because you have your child.、Yeah. And then you're like, wait a second. My、yeah. parents were like this when I was. <laughs> Dude, you know, <laughs> I don't know it's all these.、Mm. It, there's so many like things that keep coming,、yeah. it'll keep coming. I mean, in, in good and bad, you know, there's many thank yous and many fuck yous. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> really,、yeah. but it, it, it's, it's, it's all good, I think. You know, it's many thank yous and many fuck yous, but it's. it's I could see that as the title of two books by Eugene Nomura. The first book is Many Thank Yous, and the second is Many Fuck Yous. <laughs> It would be like a great like,、uh, two volume、uh, series. Many Thank Yous, Many Fuck Yous. That's great. I, I see things in crazy ways. Many Thank Yous, Many Fuck Yous. Or two films or something like that. <laughs>、uh, this has been awesome.
awesome, you guys. What a great. I really? mean, it's uh, these weeks have been intense with the work. It was such a. It's just such a great way to. I, I just you get to go out into the weekend like with this. This is being you know the last thing I'm doing. We're um, going to Palm Springs this weekend and just to like have the nice. time to think about. Oh, yeah. Have you been to Palm Springs? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I love it. I've been going there since I was a kid, and there's something really special about the desert where it do, it does something to me just being there. So it's a, it's a really it's a really good restful kind of healing place. I like to go. Yeah, oh, that's great. I love Sedona. <laughs> well, it's it's a bit far, but but it's you know. the desert. It's that's it's that desert. Is it the yeah. desertness of it that you like? It's the desertness and the red red mountain rocks that yeah. we don't have in Japan at all. So it mm -hmm. that feels very dynamic. And then I, you know, it's it's like a spot for me that I end up going when I find the time. Cool. And I love going Mitsuwa. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I'm freeze Sedona Mitsuwa. I would love. <laughs> I would almost rather go to Mitsua right now than go to Palm Springs. I am so... You're the ramen this, you know? <laughs> That's yeah. awesome, man. I usually oh, get man. some. I usually get something like at the Mitsua market. Then I go to the ramen place, and then I like have too much food, and like I yeah, I don't I don't have any restraint at that place, and I miss that place. I think it's I, I drive by it every day, and um, I'm sure they're doing fine. But yeah. Wow. Mitsua market. Oh man. <laughs> That's awesome. They have the best cream puffs there too, by the way. Ah, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ooh, oh, geez, wow. Geez. Thank Good. you, guys. No, um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Takataku. I'm sorry for my, like, you know, poor vocabularies. Are you kidding no. me? This was not, I did not, not a single thing. This was Nothing. like seamless. There was no, it was like, yeah, never. And, uh, and then I felt joy to like it really communicate uh with you guys but that's the true joy you know for doing this no thank, thank you. you really no this has cool. really made this i mean just this conversation i feel amazing it's made me happy to have this conversation with you guys it is you know just thinking about it was fun it felt effortless it was nice to really you know, for you to talk about, for us to be able to talk about ourselves and, yeah. and thank you for, you know, thank you for initiating that and starting that conversation. This, this, this is what I love. This is what I love doing. Yeah. This is what I love about this kind of thing. So, so thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for hanging out with us again. Uh, and for being a part of this conversation and Takato, thank you again uh, for doing this and, and hanging with us and, and um, Eugene, uh, thank you for everything. Thank and, you. And, thank you. Always. And, um, and thank you guys. And until next time, be well. Have, just take great care of yourselves. Bye. Mata. Bye bye. <laughs>